It's Jack and Jen from, from Jack, Jack and Jen's, Jen's Kitchen. Kitchen. Today we meet pumpkin pie cinnamon rolls and butternut squash soup. We hope you enjoy. Please subscribe. The pumpkin pie cinnamon roll dough you need four cups of all purpose flour, one cup of milk that is around 110, 115 degrees, plus one package of yeast, and one fourth cup of sugar to activate the yeast, half a cup of pumpkin puree not pumpkin pie filling, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, one egg, one teaspoon of salt, and one fourth cup of unsalted butter. So we're gonna add around half the flour, so it gets mixed evenly. The yeast mixture, and the vanilla extract, and then we're gonna give that a good stir. So we just added the rest of the flour and now we're going to stir this really well and it's going to start coming together as a dough and then we're going to start kneading it. So this is our dough after we've stirred it and it's going to be sticky so make sure you flour your hands. And we're going to put it on a well floured surface and start kneading it. And knead with the heel of your hand. While Jack is kneading the dough, in this case I'm going to use sunflower oil and a pastry brush to evenly coat the bowl so the dough does not stick. And here's the dough. It, it looks, looks really, really good. good. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to put it in the bowl with the oil and just evenly coat it so, you know, it doesn't stick. And we're going to cover it with plastic wrap and no air should escape from the bowl and for an hour to two hours. Next is our butternut squash soup. I've peeled my butternut squash and cubed it. I put a little bit of olive oil, chili powder, and salt and pepper, and I put it in a 425 degree oven for 20 minutes. So in my Dutch oven, I put one tablespoon of olive oil, and I'm gonna put two medium diced onions in here, which is the first part of our mirepoix. A mirepoix is two parts onion, one part celery, and one part carrot. And for this mirepoix, we're adding one Granny Smith apple to add a little fall oh, flair. <laughs> thing when you're making a soup is to build your flavor. A way to build your flavor is you're going to add in a little bit of salt and pepper on every step. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of salt and pepper in here to build that flavor. So now that our onions are translucent, we're going to put in the rest of our mirepoix and our roasted butternut squash. You want to make sure you're seasoned, remember? And we're going to put in our four cups of chicken stock or vegetable stock to deglaze our pan and get all those nice flavors. we a nice rumble. And then we're going to put in a good amount of salt, about a teaspoon, and a little bit of pepper. You're going to bring it to a boil and reduce it to a simmer until the flavors have developed. Make sure you leave the lid on. So our soup has been simmering for about 30 minutes and the vegetables have softened and developed their flavors. I'm going to put in a little bit of cinnamon to add those fall flavors. I'm going to take my immersion blender and just blend it up a little bit. If you do not have an immersion blender, you can definitely use a food processor or a blender to develop that nice smooth texture. As you can see, our butternut squash soup got all the chunks out from our immersion blender. The last step to finishing off our soup is tasting for your seasoning. I think it could use a little more salt, so you just want to put not generously, just a sprinkle of salt to finish it off. Now, you toast some pumpkin seeds to top a nice little crunch, and then Jackie's gonna fry some sage leaves for us. To top off our butternut squash, we're gonna fry some sage leaves and just some sunflower oil. So now I'm gonna plate my butternut squash soup. Presentation is key with a soup or with anything. So I just do two spoonfuls of that, and our toasted pumpkin seeds, I'm just gonna sprinkle a couple of those on there and our fried sage leaf just sticking in there. And those, is that, that's what those look like. So I just took this out of the microwave and it was in there for around two hours with saran wrap over top. And I didn't turn the microwave on, it's just so there's no drafts, no cold air coming in. And now let's unwrap it. And my dough has doubled in size and is very pillow-like. So I'm gonna put my dough out onto a well-floured surface and pat it down so the, some air pockets get out. And you are gonna roll it out um, to a 15 by nine rectangle. And then I'll tell you what to do for the filling. So I have my grease pan here, it's nine by 13. 
So you can just use this to um, measure how far you need to go. And I think that actually looks pretty good because it's a little longer than the pan. So I'm rolling this out to a 9 by 15 inch rectangle. So for the filling, you're going to have 3 fourths cup of brown sugar, 1 tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice, and that's really good for fall flavors, nice pumpkin flavor, and then um, 1 fourth cup of granulated sugar, and you're just going to mix this all together. So now we're going to take 1 fourth cup of unsalted butter, it can be melted or just very soft, and pour it over the dough, and you're going to spread it out evenly with your spoon. So, <laughs> Jenna is going to spread this filling evenly <laughs> over the butter and make sure it's spread out evenly. <laughs> so, now we're going to get to the really fun part. So, you're going to start rolling the cinnamon roll just a little, little by little, very tightly, so the filling all stays together. You really want that soft middle. So I've continued rolling it until it looks like this and now I'm going to take some water on my fingertips and just wet the edge so it will stick to the other side and then I'm going to pinch it. So as you can see I've cut the ends off and now I'm going to cut it in half and then keep cutting those halves in half and I'm going to get around 16 to 18 pieces. So I got 16 rolls out of this and now you're just going to place them on to the thing. You can shape them how, however you want. If they're falling, just shape them. So this is what they've looked like after we rearranged them in the pan. And now we're going to let them rise for another 45 minutes or so just so they really get fluffy. So these were in the oven for 27 minutes. And now we're going to let them cool for 3 to 5 minutes and pour the glaze right on. I'm going to pour the glaze on top of our um, buns so it gets evenly coated. And since it's still pretty warm, it's going to just melt all over and create a nice, rich, decadent sauce. So I'm going to plate these cinnamon rolls and just put a little dab of cinnamon on top. It's Hannah and Catherine, and we're Jack and Jen's Taste Festers. So first, we're going to be trying the butternut squash soup, and it looks really good. Okay. I love the smooth texture. I really like the flavor, too. And I really like the pumpkin seeds. <laughs> now we're going to taste the pumpkin pie cinnamon rolls. <coughs> that is so good. Oh, my God. Wow, that's really good. <laughs> It's so good. Oh my gosh. If you enjoyed our fall foods, please like and subscribe. And subscribe. Bye. <laughs> Ready? Ready? You can record this. I'm a loser because she really wants to be greedy and just be in my recipe. <laughs> Next is our butternut squash shoe. <laughs> Next is our butternut squash shoe. Why do I say shoe? <laughs> Next is our butternut squash soup. I'm <laughs> I did I did a little segment of yours. Okay. okay, well this will be a segment and that's it. Okay, we're gonna practice. So first we're gonna start with two medium onions in a medium high. Okay, are you kidding? <laughs> Sorry, stop. First we're, start. first we're gonna start with our um, two medium onions diced. A mirepoix. This is the first part of our mirepoix. A mirepoix. Jackie's gonna tell us what a mirepoix is. A mirepoix. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's really good. 